morning and welcome to Monday Mornings with Margie. I'm happy to be with you here another week. And I am happy to let you know that I have another cool guest uh, today that's going to be chatting with me and sharing in important information to everybody. And I'm going to let him introduce himself. How's it going? Thanks for having me on today. My name is Bill McMahon. I'm the Mass State Leader for the nonprofit Mission 22. Um, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I was in the Marine Corps from 07 to 2011. Um, I fought in both Iraq and Afghanistan while I also visited Kuwait, Afga uh, Kyrgyzstan, Germany, Ireland, all over the Middle East pretty much. Um, now, now I basically use a lot of my experiences to try and help fellow veterans um to, to learn how to uh compartmentalize their ptsd and how to overcome some some difficult challenges a lot of veterans face when they return turn home from war and this is my puppy mookie by the way <laughs> all right well we're happy that mookie's with us as well um never can have too many guests so. yeah, yeah um and if you don't have them probably be barking so it's yeah exactly you have them um, so why don't you, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I uh, had never heard of Mission 22 until Andrew had shared that with me. So yep. why don't you tell people who are listening about the mission or goal of Mission 22? So Mission 22 is a 501c nonprofit. Our goal is to end veteran suicide. Right now, a lot of people don't know that over 22 veterans a day are killing themselves via suicide. More, more veterans have died via suicide than overseas in combat in both Iraq and Afghanistan. It's a pretty scary number. Um, a lot of it gets pushed through the wayside, uh, really. You don't hear about it. You don't see it on the news. Um, you, you don't hear about any of this stuff. Um, so Mission 22 does this through awareness and treatment programs for veterans um, to help with their PTSD. Um, we have ambassadors in every state of the country. We have over 3,000. Um, so we're, we're, we're um, a countrywide organization. Our headquarters are right out of or Oregon. Wow. Huh. So um, who, like, who started this? When did they start this? How did it come about? So the founder of Mission 22 is a man named Magnus Johnson. He's a former Green Beret Army Ranger. Um, he started this organization back in 2013. He started it after uh, he realized there was a problem with veteran suicide. One of his good friends he served with committed suicide back in 2008. And it kind of brought awareness to the situation for Magnus. And, and he said he, he figured he, there needed to be something done about it. Uh, so he started Mission 22 and it just grown uh, tremendously since then. Um, so 88% of all the money we, we bring in goes directly back to veterans. I believe that's the most out of any nonprofit for any veterans group, group in the country. Um, so Magnus has done a really good job and he's done it through his own experiences, which is really important. Mm -hmm. It's really important when a nonprofit, when the guy running it actually knows what he's talking about because he's lived it. Um, so that's why Mission 22 is something I, I was drawn into because of their founder, really. Right, right. Well, it's definitely something that when you've had the same experience or similar experience, I mean, everyone's experience is a little bit different, obviously, but I feel like there's trust that comes in right from the get-go. Exactly. Uh, working yep. with people who may have good intentions, may want to help, but don't understand what it's like to have gone and fought and, and been in, in different situations and then experience the PTSD and depression and anxiety uh, and substance abuse in some cases when you come back. Exactly, no, it's it's very important to, um, a lot of veterans relate with me when I, when I talk with them or counsel them because I tell them my story first. Mm -hmm. And Magnus is very open about his story. He's wrote, written a couple of books, I believe. And um, it really helps you relate. And like you said, trust, trust is the biggest thing. If you want any veteran or anyone with a, a, a traumatizing, because you can have PTSD, it doesn't, you don't have to go to war to get PTSD. Right. Um, and and when, when you, the person trying to help you has actually been through it and can, can tell you about their experience, it, it, there's that trust built and all, all of a sudden all the walls and barriers come down and it's easy to talk and, and help that person. So, um, like 
how, tell us a little bit about how you got involved. I mean, it sounds like you were drawn to it for you know those reasons, but how did you hear about it and how did you get drawn into doing this work? So um, a couple of years ago, my fourth friend I deployed with committed suicide. Wow. Um, so at that point, I was kind of at my breaking point, to be honest with you. That's when I've been out of the military for a little over 10 years. And uh, right when I got out, they diagnosed me with PTSD, but I was on such a sugar high from getting out of the military that it didn't really affect me. And then uh, one suicide happens, another one happens. And the fourth one really struck home. It was a really good friend of mine out in California. He was a, he was a police officer. Mm -hmm. um, so I reached out to Mission 22 for help. Mm -hmm. And at the time, all their programs were full, so I couldn't get in. So I got in contact with, with a company called Vets for Warriors. And it's basically a call-in center and um, I talked directly to a, to a veteran. He was an army ranger. And he told me, why don't you get involved? Get involved, Bill. Maybe, maybe we'll help you. And that's what I did. I, so I started doing events for Mission 22 back in. My first one was two years ago. I raised over $25,000 in like two months. Wow. Um, and uh, it really changed my life. And it, really, and it really made me heal a little bit by helping others. Um, so that's how I got involved with Mission 22, and they've helped me a lot. Since then, I've gotten involved in one of their recovery and resiliency programs, uh, which I'll get into a little bit more later, but it's it's the number one program we offer. And um, I went out to Missouri with Focus Marines Foundation, and they helped me a lot too. Um, but that's how I got started with Mission 22. Wow. Well, I mean, that's a lot of loss, and yeah. uh, you hear that way more often and you're right it's not something that's like it's not discussed i oh, mean health as a whole is not something people like to talk about but you know when you have 22 people committing suicide a day per day that are veterans how can that not be something that's in the light and in the forefront exactly um as a nation uh it's it's very disturbing. So who, like, how does um, Mission 22 get funded? Is it so, fundraising? So, no, we're, we're funded through uh, grants and donations, pretty much. That's pretty much it. Um, we also do a lot of events. We raise money. We sell t-shirts, stuff like that to raise awareness. Um, but we're, we're solely funded by uh, donations and grants. Um, I believe last year we raised over $2.5 million. Wow. Um, and like I said, 88% of that goes directly back to the veterans. Um, the people that run it, we're run by a, a board of directors. Mm -hmm. uh, so Magnus Johnson obviously heads that board. There's mm -hmm. a couple of guys, his wife, Sarah Johnson and Mike Kiesel. Um, they're all part of the board of directors. Cindy uh, Stinson, she basically is in charge of all the ambassadors and state leaders. And she over oversees basically all the states and events. Uh, so it's a collaborative effort, but yeah. Now, what are, can you give me a couple examples of some of the events, like either the event you ran or. Yeah, or exactly. So I run a golf tournament every year. It's called birdies for heroes. It's out of the garden municipal golf course. Last year we raised $26,000. Wow. I also do an event called operation stop out veteran suicide. I didn't do it last year because of the pandemic, but I usually do a comedy show with um, some live music and a bunch of raffles and auctions. At all my events, I have a guest speaker. Uh, last year at my golf tournament, my buddy, Josh Eckhoff, um, he's paralyzed on the left side of his body pretty much. And um, from an IED blast, he came out and spoke. And some of these guest speakers, when you hear him speak, and I speak at all the events too, it literally really changes someone's life. Because like you said, people don't know about this stuff. People don't talk about it. It's very hard for people to, to, to talk about this stuff. Yeah. So when you actually hear someone get up there and like basically lay it out there and <laughs> plain and simple yeah. and, and, and some of the stuff's like, Oh my God. Right. And, and people really relate to that. And that's how you really affect people and get your message across. Yeah. So you were saying that, um, you were saying that it's throughout the whole country yep. so but like so for example in massachusetts yep like how many i guess programs within massachusetts like you're obviously running one but are there yep. like multiple in massachusetts uh, throughout yeah so we've we partner with a lot of uh uh big veterans organizations um 
Okay. So the Green Beret Foundation is, is one of the foundations we partner with. Focus Marines Foundation, um, I do a little work for them also. They helped me, they, they saved my life really. Um, that foundation, um, what else? Canines for Warriors, we help, which if, if our veterans need like a, a service dog or something, mm -hmm. we'll hook them up with Canines for Warriors and, and they will help them get that service dog. We do, we partner with a lot of local gyms. So there's about 35 gyms in Massachusetts that offer like free CrossFit in uh brazilian jiu-jitsu for veterans uh so we do a lot of stuff like that it's a lot of wellness stuff yeah. like um self wellness because that's what ptsd is it's really really putting yourself first mm -hmm. and you have to overcome some obstacles to do that yeah. but once you once you break down those walls and you start putting yourself first it's it's incredible what you can do mm -hmm. so um i'm not sure uh how much you are comfortable sharing some of your story. Um, and I know, you know, we're, we have some limitations on time, but I was yeah. curious if, you know, you said that one um, uh, group sort of saved your life. I don't know if you want to give like people who are listening, maybe a sense of what uh, veterans, and again, every veteran's experience is different, yeah. but there are some, you know, uh, similar threads, I'm sure. What are some of the things for you that were really difficult um, and that pushed you to a place where you needed to reach for help? Um, it was really talking about stuff for me. Um, so my fourth buddy that committed suicide, he pretty much did it over the phone with me. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, and that was really tough for me. And, I, and everything that's happened in my life, whether I never talked about anything that happened to me overseas or even any of my buddies' suicides. I would just basically, it's like having a backpack on. I just shoved everything back down in that backpack. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that backpack just kept getting heavier and heavier. And when I went out to Missouri for the Focus Marines Foundation, one of the things they had us do, which is the most powerful thing I've ever seen in my life, there was about 25 veterans out there. It was all Marines. And um, they had us, if you wanted to, you could go up in front of the stage and basically tell that one traumatic life experience that, you've never you've never taken out of your backpack mm -hmm. and um we i did that and i broke down in tears and and when you when you have 25 marines that come up and give you a hug and they're all like hey man i'm there for you brother uh it's pretty cool and that just takes the whole weight and all of a sudden you're like wow it wasn't so bad and it was just me talking about it it was just me no one had to say anything it was just some i just wanted to talk mm -hmm. about it and it's very hard um to, to talk about stuff like that because uh, PTSD is, is a lot of triggers. Uh, when, when you think about something, when you talk about something, whether it's a, a, a balloon popping or something, that could all of a sudden trigger someone into a flashback or something like that. Yeah. So for me, it, it was a lot about like talking about things and, and that's very hard for veterans to do. That's why I tell people every time anyone comes to me for help, the first thing I do before I even ask them about themselves, I tell them all about me. Mm -hmm. I tell them everything I've experienced overseas in Iraq, all about my buddy's suicides. Like it's real tough when you see someone commit suicide and he has two kids and a family, a great job, stuff that you look up to mm -hmm. and you talk to him one week and he's fine. And the next day you're on the phone with him and, and that's it. Yeah. Um, so stuff like that. Um, I've had, I've, I've, I've helped a lot of veterans. I've, I've helped, uh, one of my favorite success stories is I helped a homeless veteran. I got him off the streets. I would pick him up every day. I would take him for a walk with my dogs. Um, and he would just talk to me for 30, 45 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. I'd drop him back off at his tent. And finally I got him into a, to a little homeless shelter, but now I finally got him into some free housing wow. for himself. He's working down at Wendy's. He loves it. Um, Great. But uh, he still checks in with me all the time. Like I trust him so much. I'll let him take my dogs on his own for a walk. Mm -hmm. um, and he just credits me with like, it just simple, stupid stuff. Just simple, a walk, talking, just someone having your back can really save someone's life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that. You don't need to shove pills down someone's throat. Mm -hmm. Just have their back and be there for them. Mm -hmm. Well, and also the fact that you trust him and look at him as a human being, because exactly. often what happens in in the population of homeless 
people as various people have differing views on homeless people and why they're homeless and exactly yep so the fact that you you know cared enough to spend the time you did and you trusted him um sort of helps him trust himself exactly so um well thank you thank you for sharing that i mean i think that i think that you know the, the service that you all have provided you know to our country um and the selfless service and then to come back and have to carry that backpack or that burden yeah. um alone and in silence has to be probably one of the most painful things for anyone i i'm wondering you know when you said you kept a lot of stuff to yourself did you have like people around you like family or friends or significant other or that tried to kind of get you to open up or did people want to sort of see you as pre kind of going you know no, uh, so a lot of people did try to get me to open up and i was just very resentful towards it mm -hmm. um it, it had, i'll be honest with you it pissed me off to be honest at the time when i was in that dark spot um i i wasn't really open to i i i, I figured like i always like when you have that marine mentality you kind of it's like tough guy mentality mm -hmm. and um so I tried to play off, like I've always been able to internalize my own stuff. And um, and it, it, once I got to my breaking point, that's when I really needed help. And uh, I I pushed a lot of people out of my life during that time. And, and it's cool now, I, I have a great relationship with my family. I have a, I have a seven year old niece, she's actually, we're actually going to the zoo this weekend. And uh, so she's a big part of my life now. So a lot of things have changed. Um, and, and I, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, when yeah. you finally focus on yourself a little bit and, and you see how it works and, and it helps the people around you as well. Absolutely. Um, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, because you feel somewhat helpless, but also the people around you who love and care for you. They feel like you're, yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They feel like they're doing a disservice to you because they see you suffering, but they're right. scared to, they kind of walk on a, a tightrope to talk yeah. to you because they don't want, that bomb to go off pretty much. Right, right. So, you know, the, you know, the veterans that you're working with, I mean, yep. I, you know, I think I probably know your answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyways, what are the primary issues that, you know, the veterans are coming to you for help with, whether it's yep. mental health diagnoses or sort of life you know, life issues? What are some of the primary things that you're seeing within the veteran community? It's, it's a lot of life issues. It's a lot, of, a lot of triggers. Something traumatic in their life will happen. Kind of similar to my story a little bit. Something bad will happen in their life. And all of a sudden, everything just spitfires. It brings back bad memories. A lot of depression and suicidal ideations. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of stuff like that. Um, and, and a lot of these people don't have a support system at all. Yeah. And that's a big problem. Giving them a support system is one of one of the biggest factors. There's a, one of the things I'll ask them is, all right, what what's your family? How's your family situation going? Do you sure. have a girlfriend, wife, kids, whatever? And mm -hmm. a lot of that's been pushed off. And the reason they don't have a support system is because they've never asked for help and they've pushed everyone away. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a lot of stuff like that. Like um it's it's mainly just like depression and like suicidal thoughts but just hopelessness yeah yeah and you know how long when you start working with someone i'm sure it differs but how long till you start to see some of the initial changes with them in um usually usually after a couple of weeks so if it's someone i'm just working with kind of on my own and we don't really have to send them to any treatment programs sometimes it's above my pay grade and that's when <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm not a doctor or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, um, but as far as just like talking with me, for that, for example, that homeless veteran, within a month, I started seeing changes in him and his behavior. Like he'd get in the car. At first, he was scared to get in the car with me. And I don't blame him. I drive like a douche sometimes. But um, at first, he was scared to get in the car with me. And, and eventually, like he, you could just tell by his body language and the way he'd answer your questions. Or he'd start asking you questions, mm -hmm. which is a very positive, positive thing. I think when when you're dealing with someone and they kind of turn the conversation back on you a little bit, 
I think that's a positive sign of someone coming out of their shell a little bit. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Um, do you have another success story you'd like to share? Either one that is from someone you worked with or a success story you're aware of? Um, so my buddy, Josh Eckhoff, actually, the, the guy who uh, came and spoke at my golf tournament last year, um, he credits me with saving his life. Uh, he's tried to commit suicide about three times, failed every time. And I'll never forget the time I met Josh. Um, after having a couple conversations with him and everything, he looked at me and he said, I will never try that again, Bill, because just because of my attitude and my, my positive reinforcement to him. And he, he, he comes out here, he's from Missouri, and he's like, I come out here for one day a year, and the people out here treat me better than I've ever been treated anywhere anywhere in the country. And, and he's just stuff like that. Um, mm. I mean, I, I have so many. I mean, I could go deep into, I mean, there's a lot of people we've helped. Mm -hmm. um, uh, without their consent, I can't get too much into yeah. it. But um, it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just nice to hear that end of it. I mean, clearly yeah. there are big issues that need to be dealt with um, on a national and state level. Um, Absolutely. And I'm hoping maybe with the new administration, we might see some more focus. I don't know. Um, but, you know, these are the way, reasons why I do these um, interviews and podcasts because I'm just trying to get awareness out so people understand exactly. what's going on out there. Um, so you talked a little bit before, but what are some of the, like if you were a veteran listening to this yep. anywhere, you know, in the US, um, what are the resources specifically available to veterans? Um, and if you could review again, like what are some of the agencies or groups that you guys partner with? Yep, so, so you can go right onto mission22.com and uh, you, you can get information there as well. You can also request to um, join one of our programs. Basically, you'll get interviewed and stuff like that. Uh, if you're looking for a, uh, a, a service dog, I recommend Canines for Warriors. That's that's a good foundation. If you are in the Army, um, Green Beret Foundation is a very good foundation for soldiers. They help all branches of the military as well. Um, the biggest one for me is Focus Marines Foundation. Th that foundation, they are awesome. You, you can just go right on their website. They'll call you the next day. Um, a veteran will call you. They'll wow. basically ask you some questions. And, and, and if it's something, and if it's an emergency, you can call the veteran suicide hotline. Um, um, th there's so many resources out there. You can go on the va.gov website. Um, yeah. You can call me if you want. You can email me if you want. <laughs> My email is massachusetts1 at mission22.com. I, I don't care. I mean, yeah. Whatever you have to do to get a hold, send a carrier pigeon to me. I don't care. Whatever, whatever you got to do. Um, yeah. A lot of these organizations, they will not hesitate to get you help, though. It's not one of those things where you send something in, and you wait four months down the road to get something back. Most likely, you're going to get a call in the next two hours. Definitely by the next day, a live person will call you and say, like, hey, what's up, man? What do you need? What can I do for you? Yeah, that's amazing. Because I, uh, my understanding, and I'm not an expert in this area, but yeah. you go through the VA, it's a very different experience, a lot more bureaucratic. Yes. Yeah, so I, I'll have a funny story about the VA. I did not, I refused VA services for the first eight years I was out of the military. Wow. I did not like the VA at all. Mm -hmm. I just started going back recently. I'm actually going to a PTSD group. I meet with a psychiatrist once a month. Yeah. And they've actually been awesome. They've made a lot of big changes in the VA. That's great. Uh, believe it or not. And I hope veterans know that if, if you do uh, qualify for some of the veteran benefits of the VA, reach out to them because they have been unbelievable. And I, it kind of blows me away to say that right now, because if you asked me this five years ago, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't even I refuse to talk about the VA. Yeah. Um, but they've been really good on the ball. They call me every damn day. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> um, uh, but th they've been awesome. They've made a lot of changes there. I think they've increased their staffing big time so they can so they can be more one on one with you. Like I have my own casualty combat uh, nurse. I, I have my own doctor. And it, it's pretty cool. That's good. That's good. Because yeah. I know historically the VA was sort of over like there were they had too many people and not enough staff. Not enough staff. Yep. 
Um, exactly. and, so, and then there was, you know, bureaucratic stuff. So it's good to know that they've been able to kind of uh, redo their system to meet people's needs better. No, exactly. And on the VA topic, a lot of veterans have committed suicide in VA parking lots or VA waiting rooms throughout the country over the past like decade or so. I, I think so. And it's it, it's too bad when we talk about awareness that it takes something like that for something to change. Uh, yeah. But what's that? I think that was a big part in them kind of getting their, their stuff together. Because um, you, you bring awareness to a, a situation in the wrong way. But right. sometimes it, that, how bad does something have to get before we make a change? And that's kind of what the veteran suicide thing. The pandemic didn't help us at all with veteran suicide. I don't know the exact numbers right now, but I know right before the pandemic, it was like 20.7 veterans a day. And I know that number is well over 22 now, which yeah. is pretty sad. Um, but people are working to, to make it right. And I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop till I'm six feet in the ground trying to help <laughs> people. I'll tell you that right now. They're lucky to have you. So I want to I wanna wrap up, but I guess I wanted to ask you if you... Um, if there was a veteran listening out there, uh, a person who is struggling with PTSD or depression or whatever, substance abuse, and they're feeling suicidal or not feeling suicidal, just feeling really down. Like, do you have something you would say, want to say to them? Um, um, yeah, absolutely. So one of my biggest things is turning a negative into a positive. It, and it's very, it's very hard to do that. Also step out of your comfort zone. Do not be scared to step out of your comfort zone. It's very hard to do for a veteran to humiliate yourself a little bit. Um, but stepping out of your comfort zone, it, it, it will be the best thing you've ever done in your life. And don't be scared to ask for help. It's not easy. It took me 10 years, mm -hmm. but it changed my life. And I have a list of veterans that will tell you the same thing. Um, but the main thing, get out of your comfort zone, ask for help, look into resources, try something new. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's stuff like that. That's that's what I would tell them that's to start. Great. That's great. You know? It's the wisdom from somebody who's been there, been there, done that, and now is turned their life around and is helping you know thousands of people. So that's yeah. a amazing story. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come on with me. Um, as I said to you, you know, we're trying to shed light, you know, on lots of different um, aspects of mental health. Um, and just wellness in general amongst, you know, all different kinds of communities. And um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that you were willing to take the time to talk about this because, you know, it's really, really important stuff. So thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on and supporting veterans. It means a lot to me. And anytime you guys want me to come on, whatever, let me know. I'd love to talk about it. You guys are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you all to our, thank you to our listeners. I hope that you have a great week and be well, take care. Take care.